Okay, this one is about measurement errors, and <clears throat> I categorize them into, and many other people categorize them into two parts. There are the random errors that we always have on any kind of measurement, and then there are systematic errors that, in my opinion, we could get rid of, of those systematic errors if we know about them. Um, and I explain it as, as I go through here. First, a little bit on the random errors. Each measurement has a random error you can't do about that you, you can't do anything about it. Well, you can't make your measurement apparatus more accurate. But let me just show you, for example, on this one here, if I measured something here, we can see the divisions, 18 centimeters, 19 centimeters, and between we have the millimeter divisions, but I can't really measure any more accurate than maybe half a millimeter, and that's what I would give as the error, half a millimeter. Um, same thing, actually, on the meter sticks. These are up here are the inches, but if I look at the centimeters here, I can only go to the closest millimeter or the closest half millimeter. I can't do it more accurate with these here. Of course, with a vernier caliper, perhaps I could. Um, um, here, for example, I could measure to the closest gram respectively, this is actually one gram and the next gram here, respectively to the close, closest tenth gram or maybe half of a tenth gram. I don't know if I want to be that accurate. Uh, for the spring scale set that you're getting, perhaps I could measure to the closest, yeah, five grams or two and a half grams, kind of in between. It's hard to, hard to determine here. Or to the closest point, let's see how much is this, yeah, 0.05 newtons. That's, that's pretty much it, what I can do, a 0.025 newtons. Um, on a clock, if we could film up here, you know, if, if I use this one as, as the timer, I pretty much can only measure to the closest second or maybe closest half second if, if I really want to be a little bit more accurate. Okay. Anyway, so each, each, each measurement has a random error um, that I have to take into account. I can't really get rid of it because it is the accuracy of the instrument that I, that I use. Okay, here are going to be a, um, some examples. I'm going to go over distance, and then time, and then mass, and then a couple of others. So um, measuring lengths and distances, they can be both random as well as systematic. Let me just show you here. If I take a couple of meter sticks and I put them end to end, something like this here, I want to measure the entire length of the, of the um, of the table, then I would put them end to end here, and then I go over here and to end, and then I go over here, and to end, and then I go over here, and to end. And then I come up just short of five meters, four meters and 93, but by me putting them end to end, and perhaps a little bit shifting here, um, I come up with a random error in between. I could also produce a systematic error here. I have an overlap. I think you can see us here. So instead of putting them end to end, I make the mistake of having an overlap every single time like this here. And now I produced a systematic error. I always measured, I, at the end, I actually measured too much. You know, at this point, you have 502 centimeters, while a moment ago I had, I believe, 492. And so I always measured too much because I put them too close to each other, I had, had an overlap. And as you can see, I can get rid of the systematic error because I know about it. I better not do that, what I just did. Um, let's see. This one here, this looks like a nice, fancy, I mean, not fancy, but colorful ruler. And I put that on a pretty good one. And we can see that if 0 is over here, 1, 2, and so on, then the 6 inches on this one here compares to about 5 and a half inches on the other one. Great, I mean big um, systematic error. What happened to this one here? One day I left it in the car and the sun was shining pretty good and yeah, that one trunk pretty good. So um, the six inches that I would measure on this one here is definitely not six inches. It's systematically off by five and a half. I may not want to use this at all. Um, pacing, let's, let's go over here and let me pace through the room. Okay, pacing as I go along here, I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, about twelve paces. There's already the word in there, about twelve paces. It kind of makes a random error. Plus, my paces here weren't exactly spaced, but somewhere shorter, somewhere longer, and that gives me a random error. In the 
And, and by the way, what I want to do here is measure the length of this classroom. So now that I have it in paces, 12 paces, I'm going to put these meter sticks down. There we go. And I'm going to pace these here. One, two, three. Three, pa three paces. Um, and that would mean two meters. So at 12 paces, I would come out to eight meters, 800 centimeters. Um, I measured it earlier, 780 centimeter it, it was, so I'm a little bit off, perhaps a systematic error. And the systematic error I could have easily produced here is if I pace the room, I do carefully like this because I know I need a lot of steps. But if I pace it on the meter sticks, I might just make them too long because I want to get done. Kind of overzealous on this one. So that could produce easily a systematic error that, if I'm aware of it, could try to get rid of. Or should get rid of. I can't. Um, how are we on the minutes? Six. So we have like four more or something? Okay. Um, let's see. Time. Reading off a clock. I mentioned that earlier here. Um, if I have an experiment that just keeps on going here for, like the pendulum experiment, um, where I start at some point here, and then I keep going, and then it takes like 31 seconds for the pendulum to swing forth and back, and um, that means I have 31 seconds plus minus one second, um, and that gives me that certain random error. I can produce, I can minimize the random error by using a stopwatch, and I advise you to use a stopwatch online. So I hit the start button. There we go. And at some point, whenever I'm going to hit the stop button. And now my random error is perhaps very small, you know, 5.74 seconds plus minus one hundredth of a second. However, I do have a systematic error. Let's say the pendulum starts swinging. I didn't, I didn't actually set one up. I guess I forgot. Okay. So let's assume that it swings and then I hit. And whenever it stops, I stop. But I might be too late or too early. And that um, kind of reaction time produces 0.2 seconds of an error. Um, I know that because I measured in class before. Uh, so there's a systematic error in there. This one actually you could get rid of if you use this one here. Because if you're starting late, you're also likely to stop late. And so those 0.2 seconds systematic error actually kind of cancel each other out. Um, how much? Two minutes left or something like that? Okay, let, let's just stop and then we do.